Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the 26th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 14th of April 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. I am pre-recording this on Monday the 13th. As usual, this is your weekly update on RRGs, sector rotation and anything remotely connected to relative strength. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host for today's show coming from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. The advantage of pre-recording a show is that you pretty much already know what you're going to say or when you've recorded it, you can go back and know what you've said. Uh, and that's the case in this version as well. Um, reason for saying this is that I had recorded so much stuff that there is absolutely no time to go over um, the markets as a whole. So this is a more evergreen, educational, informational episode of Sector Spotlight. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about how you can actually plot pairs in an RRG. We discussed that in an earlier version of uh, uh, Sector Spotlight, the 23rd actually, that aired on the 24th of March. And I'm going to show you how you can actually create those, um, those UDIs that you need to plot them on an RRG. We're going extensively into how you can use breath measures on an RRG and how you can plot breath on an RRG for various sectors. I think that's a very interesting topic. And we'll go uh, look at some pair trade ideas that we have open and launch a new one. Let's get started. In the 23rd episode of Sector Spotlight that was aired on Tuesday the 24th of March, we discussed plotting pairs on a relative rotation graph. Um, and that's pairs as in pair trades that we do a lot in, in the sector spotlight. How can you plot the result of a pair on a relative rotation graph? So not the two individual legs, but the pair as a whole. Um, I explained how you can do that in the show, but I didn't explain how you could create the UDI, the user-defined index that you need to actually um, plot those pairs on a relative rotation graph. Um, we're talking about pairs like SSO versus SDS. That's the uh, ultra S&P ultra long and ultra short or QLD versus QID, which is the uh, NASDAQ version of that pair or TLT versus TBT. That's long bonds versus short bonds many pairs that you, can, that you can think of. The function that you actually need to use is UDIs, user defined indexes. You need to have a, um, a pro or an extra account to actually do that, but it is a very powerful function. Let me show you how I use that. So what we're working with is a pair like, let's, let's stick with the uh, S&P 500. So it's the SSO. That is actually the ProShares Ultra S&P 500 and the SDS, ticker symbol. That's the ProShares Ultra Short. What we actually want to see and use is the ratio of these two ETFs. So that's SSO colon SDS. And then you see the pair. Now, forget about the, um, the route of strength and the RRG lines because we don't need them. <clears throat> what we actually need is the underlying data of this series. And we can use that by downloading past data. So if you click that link underneath that chart, let's say past data, it'll give you the historical values of that pair. Now, if I download that data set, and it's already giving me that name, SSO, SDS. I save it. Now it's in that folder. And now it, I need to go to my user-defined indexes. And in my user-defined indexes, I can store a hell of a lot of um, user-defined indexes. So in this case, I need to create a new one because I just created this one here. I say new index, 
Uh, let's give it a name, simply reflect what it does, SSO, SDS. And this is SSO versus SDS. And that also can be the short description. And now I create an index. And as you see, my index is now empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload data. And we're going to choose the file that I've just created in that download. So that's right here. I'm going to upload that to the system. And now you see that my table is filled. The data are there. There's 3,462 rows. It's ignoring line one because in the text file that we download, that's just basically saying what is in that file. Doesn't really matter. And you can check what's in that file by clicking view chart. So now you see SSO versus SDS. And if I go back here, then you see that that is exactly the same chart. But here it's a ratio chart straight in stock charts. And here it's the ticker symbol at SSO SDS. And what I need to do now to plot it into an RRG is actually go to an RRG and I need to type at SSO SDS, hit enter. And here's my pair. And in this case, it's weekly. But because I downloaded daily data, I can actually use it uh, as a daily file as well and use my analysis. And as you can see, and as we explained in the sector spotlight episode where we dealt with that, um, dealt with that subject, you can, you can create a number of these pairs and plot them all on an RRG to see how these pairs are doing. And you can use all the functionality of uh, RRG, like the animation, zooming in, zooming out, um, to, to basically judge whether you want to be in that pair or out of that pair or the reverse. So in this case, where this pair actually represents long the S&P versus short the S&P as a pair, so it's a leverage trade. Um, if this one goes, let's say, through weakening and into the lagging quadrant, you basically want to be short the S&P. And if it rolls up, you want to be long the S&P. Be careful. This is um, a leverage trade, so it gives you big, big swings. Just, just make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, and this is basically how you can set up pairs to plot in an RRG. I hope this helps. It follows up with the uh, 23rd episode of Sexy Spotlight where we discussed plotting those pairs on an RRG. things that I wanted to talk to you about for quite a while already is uh, breath. As you know, a lot of people use breath as a gauge for general market direction. And there are many, breath comes in many forms. Um, advanced decline lines, number of stocks above the 200-day moving average, bullish percentages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, very often, or maybe I should say most of the time, these breath measures are for big indexes, as in P500, NYSE, uh, well, may, Dow is not a broad index, but you know, generally can be used for that. Um, the bigger picture. Stock charts has a vast array of breath index on the system. And that gives us a lot of possibilities, especially when you like to work with RRGs. Because with breath, it's, it's the same as with any other like general high level picture. You, you plot breath on the S&P, you plot breath on 
whatever you want to plot it at. And it's, you look at the breadth for that particular market. Um, with the data that's available on stockcharts.com, we can actually use breadth data on a sector level. And that's when I got interested because that allows me to plot breadth on a relative rotation graph. Let me show you how that's done. If we look for 200 in our database, we have a ton of ticker symbols that have 200 in them. And you can see that there is a special breed of indexes and that starts with an exclamation mark. Now to speed up the process, I will show you that what I want to look for is exclamation mark GT 200 and then it narrows it down, but what I especially want to look for are the series that have the sector values. So you can see that exclamation mark GT200 XLE shows me the percentage of stocks above that 200 day exponential moving average in the energy sector. Same for industrials, same for consumer discretionaries, and a whole lot more. Let's focus on the sector level at the moment for the 200 day exponential moving average. Now, I've prepared a chart for that in an RRG and I've actually called it US Sectors EMA 200. <coughs> now, if you load up this chart, let me fit this, make it a little bit smaller, and like this, what we see here is the S&P sector universe, but now expressed in the number of stocks above their 200 day moving average. Of course, the interpretation in general is that if the number of stocks above their 200 day moving average is rising, that's good for the sector. Now be careful, we're comparing it with the number of stocks or the percentage of number of stocks above their 200 day moving average in the S&P 500 itself. So this is related to the S&P, to the number of stocks in the S&P 500. XLP being very, very strong, rolling over now. Energy, very, very weak, curling up now. It's on a weekly basis, by the way. So we're looking at a 200 day moving average, but we're doing it on a weekly basis. So that's updated on a weekly basis. And I can play around with it, I can actually walk through all these tails and you know see what's going on so here industrials looks pretty negative financials materials is turning up discretionary is moving southwest so that's a negative and then if i go the other way we've got staples in the leading quadrant we got communication services in there we got healthcare in there we got technology in there but rolling over we got real estate in there making some sort of a zigzag move, still very difficult to read. And we've got utilities which pretty much bang on with the market. Now, how would I recommend using this? For me, this is additional information. Um, so you could actually plot it side by side with an RRG for the sectors. Now let's put that listed on symbol. List this one on symbol, I got materials here, and I got materials there. Now I can make up my mind. I see that the tail for materials has already started to turn up, and the number of stocks above their 200 day moving average is starting to move up. I can do the same for communication services. These are sort of confirming each other. Communication services, as we've seen it, still very close to the benchmark. Energy, starting to curl up. Stocks above the 200 day moving average starting to curl up. Let's pick one more. Staples here, staples here, confirming it. So it's giving me, it can either confirm or deny what I see on the tail for the RRG. Now be careful with doing this against the S&P 500. Another thing that I, and, and there are actually uh, more universes like this. So. This exact same universe is also available 
um, related to the to stocks number above the 50-day moving average. So I've created that one here. That's the number of stocks above their 50-day EMI, EMA. And I can do the same. Obviously, this is a little bit faster. This is a little bit shorter term orientated. And there is actually another one, which is looking at the 20-day, number of stocks above the 20-day moving average. And that's this, and that's even faster. If we look at the energy sector here, you see that that's already going up for a couple of weeks already. Um, while you saw that the 200-day number of stocks above the 200-day moving average um, was just about to turn up, which is logical because you need a lot more power to turn above your 200-day moving average than you have to turn about your 20-day moving average. Anyway, it gives you a lot of possibilities to, to look at a universe from different angles. And that's what I wanted to show you here. So I would, you know, depending on your time frame, put an RRG of the sectors side by side with an RRG, uh, which shows you the breadth of each individual sector, which might give you either an early warning system or a confirmation of what you see in the RRG or your regular charts. One little trick uh, I want to, uh, to show here. Obviously, we can do this against the S&P 500. I think that's the preferred way of showing these breadth data. So we've got oranges and oranges and apples and apples, which is, which is the way you should do it. Now, we can also stick in our famous benchmark $1, which in this case would also work somehow, although because the whole market's going up and going down at the same time, um, you will see stuff like this going up and down at the same time. And you will see that if we animate that, it moves, they pretty much move in line with each other. Now, I don't really want to show you this one, it's just to, to show that they move in line. But what if we, and let's stick with uh, staples. So I'm going to change the universe here. And I'm going to pick three staples sets. And we have, as I showed you, 200, 50, and 20. And we're comparing that to $1. And now I'm looking at three different data sets for the same sector in different time frames. And as you can see here, the number of stocks above the 20-day moving average has rapidly increased over the last three, four weeks. And then we've got 50, which has just started to turn up, and we have the 200 that is still moving sideways. So this, if you, if you plot all three for one sector, you get basically <clears throat> the breadth of three time frames in one graph. And you can obviously compare that with what's going on in the staple sector as such on your regular RRG. As a matter of fact, why don't we stick XLP in this RRG as well? So now we have the breadth of the staple sector and the relative move of the staple sector itself. Be careful against the S&P 500. So it's outperforming the S&P 500, but it's underperforming dollar one. So the, the sector itself is underperforming dollar uh, one in a sort of buyer market environment. That's what you would expect. But we see that the number of stocks above the 20-day moving average is actually rapidly increasing. And we, depending on our time frame and our aggressiveness, we may want to wait until 50 days picking up, etc. Let's do one more here with, let's say, technology. Everybody likes, loves technology. So we're going to change these ticker symbols to XLK instead of XLP. Uh, not XLX, that's not going to work. XLK. Uh, XLK. So here, XLK, XLK, XLK. And there you go. So now we see pretty much a similar picture. 20-day, rapidly rising, 50-day turn there, XLK itself going the other direction. Let's plot this against SPY and see how that looks. Now we have it 
relative to spy, we can still, you know, you, you see that these, let's, let's copy this, duplicate this file here, put them side by side and put them against dollar one. You can see the effect of a different benchmark for the rotations of the number of stocks above their moving average it doesn't really matter it's just the position that is different and now with dollar one this whole thing is moved uh, to the lower left because the mark's been going down and here against spy we see that xlk is actually uh, at the right hand side now, one thing to, to uh, bear in mind is that the percentages here for the number of stocks is huge, while uh, which makes like the uh, looks makes the, the XLK tail look very very small, where in fact it, it isn't. It's it's the same. You see now it starts to grow because this was so so big. So this is like 50, which is like almost never happening. Um, but for the position vis-a-vis -vis XLK, vis-a-vis dollar -vis one, it's the, it's the rotation of the tail that we actually want to look at, that's what we're interested in. Um, so this is what I wanted to share with you in terms of breadth. This shows you how you can actually use the specific data sets that we have on stockcharts.com showing breadth data for individual sectors on an RRG that you can use side by side with the RRG of the sectors to get a different angle, um, maybe get a little bit of early warning systems, um, slicing and dicing that universe from different angles, I think always uh, can give you a little bit of extra value out of the box, uh, stuff that not everybody is looking at it, uh, looking at in this way, let's put it like that. What about our pair trade ideas? Um, been a little bit quiet last few weeks, a uh, very volatile market, and I am of the opinion that no position is also a position, and you should never take a trade because you feel forced to trade or because you feel the urge to trade, because that's, that's generally very bad advice. Now, Let's see what we have open at the moment. That's a, that's a very short list, actually, only two. It's um, SPY, which is the center of the chart, against IEV. That's basically um, saying that the US will outperform Europe. So that tail actually went against us a little bit, but now is coming back to us. So we'll have a look at that later. And the other one came from the uh, equal weight versus cap weighted ETFs. And the, the, the take that I took there was that um, cap weighted, so basically the larger banks were gonna outperform the smaller banks, which meant uh, long XLF and short RYF. <coughs> so we got these three or probably four legs of those pair trades in this RRG here, and I have a chart list where I track these pair trade ideas. Um, the first one, SPY versus IEV. We entered that one, I think it was 10th of March. Yeah, 10th of March. Um, very well from the beginning, then dropped rapidly against us and now is starting to pick up again. And if we just highlight that in the RRG here, go back to March 10. Let's do it like this. So this is March 10. So this is the moment where we entered that trade saying long SPY short IEV. That went okay for a little while, then it rapidly returned against us. That's that big drop here. Um, we talked about it in Sector Spotlight when it was sort of testing this old resistance as support, decided to stick with it. And that's now going in the right direction for us again because the tail rolled over just shy of entering the lagging quadrant and is now inside lagging again. So we're gonna see how long this 
uh, rally in this pair is gonna is gonna take uh, and try to benefit as long as possible. The other one is XLF versus RYF. Uh, we entered that on March the 23rd. Well, talking about good timing there. Um, let's see how that was on the RRG. So that's March 23. That was here. And here you see that XLF seemed to start rallying um, more rapidly than RYF. That's the reason uh, why I put on that, that pair trade. I launched that pair trade idea. And if we scroll through time, then you see that basically RYF is overtaking XLF over the last couple of weeks, which is not good for us, but it is what's happening. And we're now sort of going hand in hand. Uh, very recently, RYF has started to roll over while XLF sort of is maintaining momentum. So I'm going to give this a little bit more leeway. We see it here that jump from the last two days is up again, uh, but this should, this should now really start to work or we have to say goodbye. Now, I came up with a new idea and that's actually coming from the, basically I want to stay close to home. It's uh, again, two ETFs in sectors. And the ones that caught my eye were uh, materials and consumer discretionary. Uh, especially, you see here already that the tail on, on materials is accelerating while discretionary is sort of hanging in there. The picture becomes a little bit more pronounced when you look at the daily. Uh, let's just put the two there. So XLB versus XLY. This is what we like to see. Uh, now you see that XLB is actually accelerating and already inside the leading quadrant. And discretionary is also accelerating into the lagging quadrant from improving. Usually not a very good sign. This last year, the market just opened um, uh, in Europe. It's now um, 5.30, so um, market in US is open for, uh, for a couple of hours. Uh, and, and you see that this is a little improvement in XLY, but you see that the improvement in XLB is much stronger. So I'm going to enter a pair trade or launch a pair trade idea, long materials and short discretionary. And we're going to add that to the list and so see how that develops uh, over the next couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the 26th episode of Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. And as usual, if you want to stay in touch, don't hesitate to drop me an email. If you want to keep in touch on RRGs and relative strength, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com and subscribe using the link below. See you next week, every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.